there weren't too many things to shout about uh, in the Brentford game uh, at the weekend. I mean, look, it was a point we needed to get, get something. We couldn't afford to lose. We didn't lose. And I actually thought we did well to come back from a goal down. I've talked about it enough. I don't want to keep going over it. Um, but one real big, big point. There was a few positives out of that game I want to talk about, a couple of bits. But the, the big one was Jean-Claire Tadebo, um finally making his Premier League bow. And not only that, but looking decent. I, I was really impressed with him. In fact, he got man of the match uh, for that game. Uh, and I, I'm really pleased. I, internally, I think it was a, you know official West Ham man of the match. I'm not sure exactly how that works in terms of the... Uh, overall but I, I was really pleased with him I think he demonstrated a real quality uh, about him that we, we knew he had and we must have because of how well he's done previously how, how highly regarded he is or the clubs that are in for him we knew we were going to get a, a, you know, a talented individual here and I felt like in that game we, we saw it like, like, this guy is has got a lot of ability um, I think he was really good on the ball. I think he fights as well. He's got a real bite about him, really wants to get stuck in. And I, I just, I'm, I'm really enamored with him already. Uh, seeing him play to that, I thought, oh, uh, this is the kind of guy we want. You know, he looks like a bit of no nonsense, gets stuck in. And I, I'm, I'm very pleased. And it was just so good, wasn't it, to see him finally playing? Um, I, I don't know about you, but I've been feeling quite anxious about him uh, in the fact that we've paid this money, a £35 million defender, and you know Juventus want him, Man United want everyone wants him, and he can't get a game at West Ham. It was looking a bit worrying. So, um, But we've been told prior to all of that by Lopetegui that the player wasn't match ready, wasn't Premier League ready and all this sort of stuff. And that really frustrated me and also just worried me. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm thinking, what's really going on? Um now, not only has Stevo come in and, and played well, but he's he's spoken after the game. He's spoken to the club's official website. We talked about it on our website as well. Um, I, I I will say I'm not only impressed with his performance. I'm impressed by what he had to say. Actually, I think he was really open, honest, and I don't know if you saw the game right, but his passion, like for a guy that's just joined the club. I mean, obviously, he wants to do well, wants the West Ham to do well, but he was really up for it. He, he was getting stuck in. He was firing him up. And when we scored, he was going mad with the fans. It meant everything to him. And he comes off the pitch as well, and he talks fantastically well in terms of how his ambitions for the club and they, 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 you know, the fact that we're going to be challenging the top sides this season and we're, you know, the confidence levels from this, this guy. I thought... You know what? This is um, exactly what we need to hear because he's obviously he's been silent, isn't it? Since he joined, he's not been playing. We're not hearing from him. He's not coming on, and when he does, it's only for a brief cameo, all this sort of stuff. And then you see him play like that, and then come out and react, you know, interact with the fans like he did, but also talk the way he has. I'm really pleased. I, I'm really, really pleased. I feel like now we're seeing that pairing that we wanted, the kilman Tadebo pairing at the centre-back. I'm I'm already sure that he's he's got that shirt. It's for his to, if him to lose now. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not Mavropanos anymore because uh, he was that good. I thought he looked real solid. And the fact is, like he said after the game, uh, Tadebo, he said he's not fit. He's still not ready yet. Although he said, and I like the fact he completely echoed what Lopetegui has been saying. So Lopetegui said, Previously, he's just not ready for Premier League football. Basically, needs to toughen up, speed up, get the pace of the game, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, initially, when you you read comments like that, I'm thinking, oh God, like how's that going to affect Tadebo? He's going to read this, he's going to see this, he's going to be pissed off and think, oh gosh, you know. And I've, I think I even said that in the comment. You might be thinking, what have I done here? What have I, who have I signed for? You know, um, but no, far from it. Far from it from Sadibo. In fact, he was saying the exact same thing. I've not been ready. He said he's grateful to the club, grateful for the fact that he's been given all this time to get himself ready and get himself fit enough to compete in the Premier League. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. And the fact is now, as I say, he's looking up the table. He's looking at the top of clubs and saying, we're going for them. So it's exactly what we want. I I'm really, really pleased. And I'll tell you what he did as well. It brought about a solution to West Ham's defensive woes at the moment. Because let's, let's get it right. Julian Lopetegui is still not sure of his side. You can, And I kind of understand that. I, I feel like, well, that probably would be natural that you're going to still be tinkering and moving things around. I feel like there's probably eight or nine players now that are pretty much solid in that team, but there's a few that he can manoeuvre 
and he's still not quite convinced him. You know, you look at the midfield, Paquetta's obviously been out of form. De Soler come in. We're looking at the left wing. Does Somerville start? Do you put Caduceus there? Well, where does Caduceus come in the middle? It, there's still some selection dilemmas. Of course, we've still got the striker situation. Fulkrug's obviously injured, but does Bowen play there? Oh, does Antonio. There's a few tweaks there. But defensively, um, I feel like when we played that game, it was almost like a solution started to appear defensively like it's going to result you know there's a real good option there and the option is to have um uh, Mavropanos playing at right back he came in at right back during that game which I I admit when it started to unfold I thought oh I'm not sure about this at all I thought he played really well I I really felt this is a better role for you actually Mavropanos you look better suited here um I thought you looked composed you looked fine He, he was dealing with the um the wingers fine um I, I don't know whether, when you look at Mavropanos, um, because being a centre-back, I imagine the pressure's slightly more so than being a right-back when I'm talking about defence. Look, I understand every position's got big pressure on it. I'm not suggesting that it's it's a much easier job. But a centre-back is you've got to be so, so switched on. One mistake as a centre-back, it can be just so, so costly. Um, and you get absolutely scrutinised. And, I, you know, sometimes with Mavropanos, I don't know about you, I just get the feeling sometimes he looks a little bit like a rabbit in the headlights, like he's always going to make a mistake. And as I say, when you make a mistake in that role, that centre-back role, it's inevitably, especially in the Premier League, you're going to be punished and they're going to score a goal. Whereas if you make a mistake at right back, it might not necessarily be leading to a goal. Do you know what I mean? It, I don't know whether that will suit him better to have that kind of um, role within the team. And he certainly delivered on it. And I certainly like the fact that uh, Wan-Bissaka went at left back because he's, he's our best left back. He, he proved he's been better. Well, I mean, Emerson's been shocking this season. Absolutely shocking. Nowhere near the levels he's been at um, for quite a while. And I feel like that does tie into um, the form of Paqueta as well. Because last season, they dominated the left-hand side, predominantly for our side, <clears throat> all season for our team. Um, and now Paqueta's so out of sorts, obviously not playing on the left, etc., etc. You can see that uh, Emerson's game is suffering. Um, so I'll tell you what, <clears throat> you look at that back line, of Mavropanos at right, Tadebo, Kilman, and Wambasaka at left. That's not a bad back line, you know. I I, I thought we looked pretty solid. I, I I'm really imp- impressed with it, and I wonder whether Lopetegui will see that and and admit to that. That could be the solution. Um, not to say it will have to be you know throughout. That's a number one choice throughout, but I'd like to see more of it. I'd like to know what you think about whether you want to, whether you're impressed. But I, I certainly was. But as I say, the one big thing for me was Sadibo. I, I am so pleased to see him playing and not only playing, but playing well and speaking so well and, and interacting with these fans. I'm looking at him thinking, this guy, he could be the next sort of like cult hero. You can already get a tight feel for it, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I do think now that there are some positives out of that game. And it wasn't pretty it wasn't brilliant it wasn't the best West Ham performance I'm talking about Brentford here it wasn't great but I'll tell you what there were some positives and Tadebo was one and Mavropanos falling it right back was certainly uh, a real big plus for me um yeah I I, I genuinely believe that although it was uh, not the best result and everything else I feel like that could be a pivotal point for us and if we can just carry this into the Ipswich game up our game further and get the three points, then I really would like to think we've drawn a line and we can start kicking on this season. 